Alright y'all, YouTube, welcome back to another video. I'm gonna be going over episode 6 to the finale of Invincible Season 2. Um, what a terrific season, by the way. I was totally wrong to say that it might lose its momentum because of the break that it went on. Because it definitely got it right back. And um, the only con really is that, well I have a few things to go over, but the main disadvantage or, or like problem that I had with the season was the weekly releases. But um, yeah, so starting off with episode six, after the very tense, like episode five, I was slightly disappointed that like every single character basically survived. Well, more of the other characters towards the end. But um, I don't know, I thought Rex was going to die, but I'm kind of cool with him being alive. And then I, I for sure thought that Shrinking Ray was dead. So that seemed a little bit like um, anticlimactic. And... Yeah, Kate is also alive, and it turns out that she's been on another island this whole time. I felt like that was kind of like a, a top-out, because they may not have known what to do with Immortal. And it was just such an easy way to like bring her back to life, was that she's been living through a clone this whole time. And when you think about it, it kind of makes sense, but I would have preferred if at least one character died, and that just raised up the stakes. But um, yeah, and then the Guardians escape the Sacred and return back to Earth, but the human who is no longer controlled is back to being controlled once again. So I'm looking forward to how they're gonna include that in the story in season three. And um I also really liked how they you know included Donald talking Rick out of um, you know, self offing from the ledge of the building because they could both relate to what the other went to. So that was pretty nice. And I also really liked, because I got a little bit of a spoiler, but um, basically I, I also really liked how the relationship between Adam, Eve, and Invincible has kind of developed a little bit more. So I really want to see that in season three and uh, see how it comes to fruition. And the, also the, no, uh, the novels that Nolan wrote, I think those are weaknesses against the Viltrumites. Like Mark said, real life, real creatures in the show that can rival a Viltrumite. So, and then he's giving it to Alan now, so we might see that happen in season three. And then on to episode seven. Um, I also, I really enjoyed episode seven because it's, it's very funny. I love the meta commentary between when that, when Mark was going to get his stuff signed by that guy sitting at the convention and then he was talking about the animation process taking a long time. And so there was these, there were these scenes where he wasn't going to talk. And he was just hiding his face or his mouth. So that was really funny. And then Anissa shows up, another Viltrumite that's here to collect Mark to join the Viltrum Empire. And she threatens Amber, which leads to a strained relationship between Mark and Amber. Because, you know, Amber is a human being and Mark is constantly getting faced with superhuman problems, which can negatively impact Amber. And so they just cannot be together. They're not compatible because um, sooner or later, Amber might just face a life-threatening situation that Mark can't help her out of. And, you know, Mark can heal, Mark can regenerate, but Amber can't do any of these things. So it strains the relationship further, which is only leading towards like a breakup of some sorts. And then, so yeah, Anissa shows up, wanting Mark to join the Viltrum Empire. We did a really cool fight scene, or just a, you know, an obliteration of Mark, really, because he couldn't really do nothing. And um, this just still proves that Mark still has a long way to go before he can really rival a Viltrumite. I don't even know if he's as strong as Nolan right now, or maybe he is, but that just shows that Nolan is not even the strongest Viltrumite. There are others stronger than him. So yeah, Anissa shows up wanting to recruit him. Mark declines. And I really like the contrast of Anissa beating Mark like mercilessly with ease, and then towards the end of the episode, when Alan is, you know, fighting her for the first time, Alan isn't hurt at all. In fact, he actually makes her bleed, and so I like that nice contrast that Mark could have made Anissa bleed, but uh, Alan the alien could. So this just solidifies that Alan the alien is definitely stronger than Mark, and I hope to see like the team up between Mark, Omni Man, and Alan against Viltrumites and other characters. So, in the future. So, yeah. Okay, on to the finale of the episode of the season. I thought you were stronger. So, yeah. Um, What's his name? What's it called? 
Ancient Levy returns from whatever hiatus or, or trip that he went to across the dimensions. And now he's threaten, threatening Oliver and Mark's mother. And he calls Mark to come home. And we got a, l- a cool little bit, a cool title sequence with uh, this guy jogging and a touch of the invincible title card. And it turns out, I'm not too happy with what, I feel like they could have fleshed out Ancient Levy a little bit more. Because again, the last time we saw him have a main role in an episode was the first one and it was the final episode that we got a little bit of like his backstory or rather like the backstories of multiple versions of him but i'm still not completely set on the motivation for what he's why he's doing what he's doing i mean it makes sense multiple versions of ancient has gone through like a lot of heartache caused by various by variants of mark so, and then they're all fused into one. So he's sharing all the collective memories and then that's why he hates Mark. But I don't know, it could have been built up to, or he could have had a little bit more screen time, but I'm still satisfied with what we got. And so he's threatening Oliver and uh, Debbie and then Mark comes in and Mark constantly gets thrown to random dimensions and has to fight people. At first I thought it was going to be like a back and forth. Like, are we just going to see Mark randomly getting thrown through dimensions for the rest of the episode and then nothing really happens. But I was totally wrong. And the reason Anstrom is doing all this is to soften up Invincible and to get beat a little bit because Anstrom himself has superhuman capabilities now, like physically, and he's just trying to kill Invincible and make it easier for himself. And we got like two cool cameos of a variant of Spider-Man, basically, but they can't because of like legal reasons, I guess. So, Agent Spider, that was really fun to see, and Batman, so that was also really fun to see. And then we see the fight between Angstrom and Mark, when, after Angstrom breaks Debbie's arm, and I really thought Debbie was going to die, so I was like, I was on my seat, like, bro, chill, you know? So, Angstrom takes Mark to this other dimension, and they fight it out, but, and I thought that the show was going to begin to follow this formula of... Mark always getting beat mercilessly in the final episode. And then the show will just be about him getting stronger and stronger eventually and then fighting this big bad. But um, no, they totally proved me wrong. And I'm happy about that because Mark kills him pretty easily because he's not that strong. Hence the title of the episode, I Thought You Were Stronger. And now we're going to see Mark and how killing for the first time really affects him because... He thought he was stronger. He wanted to kill, but he didn't know if he could. And Anstrom himself said that he had superhuman upgrades done by doctors across dimensions. So I myself thought that Anstrom was like really strong or on a level of a Voltramite, but it turns out he's not. He died pretty easily. So that was crazy to see, but I'm also kind of happy that they haven't like nerfed Invincible or not nerfed, but like the final villain isn't someone significantly stronger than him. It's actually someone that's very weak. So, yeah. And then, like I said earlier, I don't too much like that they brought back Kate to life, saying that like she was living through a clone the whole time. It kind of makes sense, though. Like, if you had a clone that constantly died because you're a superhero, you would probably, it would probably be in good, you know, it would probably be a good decision to have a clone just live somewhere else, totally. And so that if you die, you still have one more clone left with all the memories. So, yeah, I don't know. But, um, and then, yeah, Oliver, I'm glad Oliver and Debbie survive. And um, I want to see Oliver and Mark, the, the dynamic in the next season as well. But, yeah, overall, good season. It's just as good, if not better or slightly worse than the first season. So I'm totally satisfied. It's still a 9.0 show, in my opinion. But, um, yeah. And... I also wanted the end, the beginning of this episode to be like a breakout scene of Omni Man and Alan the alien, but I'm cool with not getting it right now. But I think for season three, I'm deciding whether like I want like a a time skip and it just shows Alan and Nol- uh, Nolan flying away instantly, or we see an actual Dory like fighting between Viltrumite and then Alan and Omni Man. But yeah, that's about it. Peace. Leave a comment down below what you thought about the episode.